Guys, everyone, welcome to the fourth game of the series. You're gonna have a small break after this one so that you can go to the bathroom or stretch a bit, stand up, walk away from the PC, whatever you want to do. But we're gonna go straight into this game right now. Let's see. Tato's gonna be playing Chinese, interesting, and they are playing this time Land Madness. Alright, so what's good about this map? Is that they get a lot of wood lines, right? So they have wood over here, over here, here. They have a lot of woods to choose from. But they cannot properly wall this as you would usually wall the, a normal map like Arabia because of the, the, the ice here. So they have to do like local walling here, small walls to cover just the lumberjacks. They cannot actually wall the, the entire base. So this is quite risky if you are fighting versus a player that has good towers or a player that's super aggressive, you, you really need to take care over there because you might lose all your access to wood. Right now though we can see that Dao is going to be playing Maj uh, Mayans, so Chinese versus Mayans 2, Archery Civilizations. Now Mayans they also get access to the Eagle line of units, so Eagle Warriors, Scouts, uh, Elite Eagle Warriors, those are very good against range units, but Chinese specifically, they get the two canoes and the two canoes are actually good against the uh, Eagle Warriors because they don't rely on a single arrow to deal all of the damage. Uh, and, and the good thing that Eagle Warriors they have against ranged units is that they have high pierce armor but when you shoot many arrows you have guaranteed extra damage and also they are quite fast, they shoot quite fast. So we're gonna need to see if Tato actually goes into two canoes. We might see a variety of stuff, they, they can usually also open with scouts so we can probably see scouts into archers. Uh, we can see a variety of stuff, for that we can we can see men at arms into archers, we can see straight into archers um, and then into eagle warriors. But anyway, there's a variety of stuff that we might witness in this game and there's also of course the potential for towers. For the time being though, none of them is gonna scout the other guy, so they're just gonna start pushing deer. They're just gonna try to work on their eco. Yeah, there you go, so Tato's gonna start pushing deer as well. We're gonna have to wait until a few village to see more action. If we take a look at the map though, the goals are quite small. They are all over the map, but they are quite small, so map control is super important in this map as well. Yeah, there you go. Tattoo just chilling right now. I believe this is the third deer that Dao pushes. I'm not sure if he's gonna go for more or not. He can potentially go for a meal over here. If he goes very aggressive, it's not very unusual to see players drop a meal uh, by the berries or try to push deer towards the meal. Yeah, the game's going quite chill for the time being. Uh, what series is this? I thought probably official was dead. Well, it's not dead. Welcome once again, though, if you used to be here a lot. My name is Nova. I am a new caster, so this is my first stream here. I'm gonna be streaming on Tuesdays around this time. Today we are casting best of 13 between Doubt and Tato. The games have been quite good. Last game was a bit quick, I'm gonna be honest. But the first and the second game were quite good. They were super good, especially the second one with the combat back back. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words, sir. All right, there we go. That is gonna start bringing more lumberjacks over here. He is gonna focus on a single wood lane, though. This is something that is not very usual here. Uh, he could potentially have tried to send lumberjacks over here. Uh, but that was probably gonna be too far away from the TC to protect, uh, to have to protect both wood lines at the same time. I mean, both wood lines are far away from the TC, but if you place a tower or if you wall this, then you protect your entire wood eco. However, Doubt's gonna scout this. What are the chances? 
first woodland that he scouts from Tato is the one that he is working on. How about Tato? Tato scouted this area, but I'm not sure if he... Yeah, he knows about the lumberjacks over there. So situation quite similar for both players. Uh, Tato does have one extra villager though, because of being Chinese. And let's see. So the Mayan player is gonna open with men at arms. Uh, militia as of this point. Tato's gonna go for scouts by the looks of it. Finishing the barracks at this time. About to hit fuel age usually means that you're gonna go for, for stable. There you go. So Chinese they do get good cavalry. They get bloodlines. They get husbandry. They get up to light cavalry though. So they do not get hustle. But as an opening it's quite alright. Uh, especially they can also use cavalry units as a mid shield when they start eventually switching into archers so that's also quite important to have a mid shield when you're going for range units otherwise uh, your warriors might just chew you up so Chinese composition is better later you expect well I believe if, if, if Tato has a chance to mass a good amount of Chukunus he should have the advantage Plume Archers, they are quite good as well. I'm not really sure what the matchup between Plume Archers and Two Canoes is like. I'm not sure who has the edge. But against Eagle Warriors, at least, they are quite, quite good. Oh, let's see over here, though. Tato not gonna go for the Quick Walls. He's just gonna retreat all the villagers. He's gonna go for the Archer range right now. Archers are going to be good versus the Minotaurs versus the Spearmen. Uh, they are not going to be great versus the Eagle Scouts if they uh, if Doubt upgrades those. But he's not going to go for Eagle Scouts. They are just too slow to train in village, so very hard to mess up. As for Tato, he's going forward with a couple of Scouts. Uh, you think Pum Archers fully upgraded win over Chukunus? Might be the case. We're gonna we're gonna need to wait and see. So Chinese, both civilizations get kind of good bonuses, Mayas they get longer lasting resources, but Chinese they get cheaper upgrades in village. They get if I'm not mistaken 10%, 15% and 20% cheaper technologies in feudal castle and imperial age, so that's a great bonus to have. Oh look the quick wall, <laughs> there you go. On point, doubt. Who was even mocking this guy for low APM? He's even gonna get this up. Uh, a couple of free hits here. The scouts are getting very low HP. And over here. Oh, thank you for the cheer. Oh, thank you for the cheer, man. So, donations here are going strictly towards show matches. So, this one, best of 13, is not for money. This is something that they did for fun. But as soon as we reach the donation goal, then we're gonna be able to host our own show match, hopefully, for the enjoyment of the whole community. So, yeah, both civilizations get siege ramps, both civilizations get heavy scorpions. Both civilizations get onager, but none of them get uh, siege onager. So the thing is going for siege rounds and then your strong archer unit, which is the archers for Mayans and the Chukunus for Chinese. Uh, the difference over there, though, is that the, the Chukunus they are better against siege than the Mayan plum archers. They can chew through rounds if you mass a large number. So yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see how this plays out. There is a variety of combinations that they can go for. So I'm very interested, very interested to see what they actually do. The progress bar seems new and nice. The top right. Uh, this you mean? That's part of the spectator overlay. It's a very handy tool for casting and also for viewing recorded games and live games. Look at this, immortal Minotaurs, they still are not dying, they are running away from the archers, they've been running for a couple of hours now, or years in Age of Empires time. 
Doubt is gonna switch into Eagle Scouts though. Let's take a look at the upgrades. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. thank you for the you sub. Spilkinator, thank you so much for subscribing. Guys, all the support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much everyone for the support, for the subs, for the cheers, for the donations. And yeah, the, the whole purpose of this channel is to help the community uh, get good games to help the game grow. And yeah, thank you so much for all the support. Your first Twitch sub? Oh, welcome and thank you so much. You're gonna get access to the Wooly emos now. <laughs> there we go, guys. Yeah, what a great time to spend. Uh, what a great day to spend time today over here. Doubt going into Eagle Scouts. Uh, Eagle Scouts, they are not the best against regular Scouts. Uh, but they have been upgraded now, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, the Scouts, regular Scouts should still win the, the matchup here. So, Doubt is struggling here. Doubt is wasting a lot of units. Eagle Scouts in Village, very slow to train, uh, very hard to, to mass. They are also more expensive th than Scouts. Scouts only 80 food. Uh, Eagle Scouts, they cost 50 gold per unit. And this seems to be going kind of in favor of Tato, to be honest. He's cleaning all of this up. Tato, or Doubt rather, doesn't seem to be able to mass enough Eagle Scouts. Tato going for padded archer armor now, so the ranged units are gonna be tankier. Let's see. And yeah, this is very bad for Doubt. He's gonna push away from this. Uh, fortunately for him, he can push Tato's army away from his wood line, otherwise he would be denied of wood as well because of the range units. He's gonna have to go back now though, so this is gonna boil down to micro 1 spearmen, 4 eagle scouts versus a couple of regular scouts, archers and skirmishers. Tato going for forging, so the scouts are gonna get even more, uh, they're, they're gonna get even stronger. Yeah, this is not the situation you want to be in, and doubt right now. Five villagers behind, six villagers behind, a lot of vital time. He is not able to take the food from here, so that is kind of wasted wood at this point. He lost so many units, the KD 24 to 14. Doing a great job. The military difference indeed, 3 to 1, 22 to 7. And then again, the Eagle, Eagle Scouts... Uh, the regular scouts probably are enough to clean uh, the eagle scouts, at least 1v1. The spearmen, they cannot work effectively because of the because of the ranged units from Tato. He can snipe the, the spearmen and his scouts are going to be safe. He's getting denied from gold over here. Uh, he was taking gold here, right? Yeah, this one's going to run out though. Only 400 gold remaining over there. Blue player going up to Castleage though with the very good macro plays that uh, the doubt is known for. He's gonna be able to go up to Castleage. Now, Eagle Warriors, they might be able to change the, the situation here. I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to afford that though. Is he trying to create more? So he's training more Eagle Scouts here with all the barracks. This is potentially a good fight for him. Let's see, these guys, they have all the upgrades they can get in Field Age, but they are getting cleaned up. Doubt is bringing the villagers over to fight, this is not a good sign. He is going to be able to go for Eagle Warriors now, let's see, he is selling wood, he's going to try to use the market to afford the Eagle Warrior upgrade, but he doesn't have enough resources. He needs to go for for chain bar uh, for chainmail armor, so to get a plus two. He needs to go for Eagle Warrior. He's going for Eagle Warrior right now. There you go. That's probably the most important upgrade that he needs right away. Uh, hopefully, uh, thankfully for him, that upgrade is quite quite quick. So he's gonna get the Eagle Warriors upgrade in just a moment, a couple of seconds more, then he should be able to clean this up. 
There you go, Eagle Warriors, now we're talking. These guys, they get three pierce armor. They already have the plus one from the scaled mail armor. That would go in for chainmail armor, and that's probably gonna be enough to clean this up. Let's see. The HP pool is not the best here. Tato could potentially snipe all the Eagle Warriors if he might with this better, but there is no way for him to click these units uh, fast enough to actually spot all the weak ones. And this is gonna get cleaned up. So this is quite similar to the second game, where Tato was at a huge advantage. He had the lead, he had the military lead. 3 to 1 uh, in terms of military count. Just a couple of minutes ago, and look at this right now. 15 to 12. All of these units are gonna die to the Eagle Warriors, and... Doubt's even gonna start sending a couple of extra Eagle Warriors around, and he's gonna start harassing here. So he's gonna deny the gold, he can potentially come over here, this is over chopped, so he can get in. Let's see. Tato clicking up so delayed. Exactly. He's still in village, he doesn't have the food to go up. He is going for men at arms though. Minotaurs are a bit better against the Eagle Warriors than the regular scouts. But still, he's getting outnumbered here. I feel like. Yeah, all the scouts are gonna go down. Let's take a look at the military units from Tato. Dropping numbers dramatically, losing units left and right. Couple of units remaining. Four or five units remaining for Tato. Five, three. And that's gonna be left with a very nice amount of Eagle Warriors that he can use to go and try to raid. Over here though, Tato did manage to sneak a couple of archers over there. It seems like he was able to snipe one villager or two. Uh, Tato seems to be going kind of full feudal in so many games lately. It seems to be the case, it seems to be the case. It might be working against other players but Dad is such a good macro player. Uh, he can hold on. He can. He can survive all the harassment in the world. And yeah, we saw that in game two. We are seeing that right now. Dad is still going full feudal. He doesn't have anywhere near the resource to go up. And uh, Minotaurs are going to be good though. Oh, but what is he going to do about this? Tato noticing. Tato noticing this. Going to bring all the villagers back. He's gonna realize about the overchop here. He's gonna try to go for a house, wall this. This is not gonna wall though, the, the hole. And there you go, Tato calling the GG, guys. This is the third game for Doubt. So we're gonna change the scores right away. Um, let's see. There you go, so Doubt 3. Tato 1, and we're gonna go to the achievements. KD, 4 to 3, pretty much. In favor of that, surprisingly. And many of those units that Tato killed, like in many other games, were villagers. So that was very good for him if you LH. He actually managed to get the villager lead. Uh, he even got the military lead, but the macro from that, man, just so hard to stop. Even with the larger, larger eco. Yeah, look at that, 55 to 39 villagers, villager high. Still not enough. Look at that, this is the moment of the comeback. Yeah, alright. So, everyone, we're gonna jump into the fifth game in just a moment. We're gonna take a small three minutes break, so feel free to stretch a bit, walk, uh, stand up, do your thing, and we're gonna go back in just a moment.
All right, everyone, we're back. So we're gonna load now what I believe is gonna be the fifth game of the series. Let me see, yes, that's correct. So just a moment. All right, here we are. We also have the flags right now. Perfect. Just a moment, we're gonna get the in-game sound in a bit. All right. Okay, perfect. So this time we are gonna be seeing uh, Kills to Mountains. So yeah, fifth game of the best of 13 series between Doubt and Tato. Both players are gonna go for the TCs right away. Tato's gonna get his TC up a bit earlier, so he's gonna get the villager advantage. Going for the elephant right away, so both players are getting two elephants, if I'm not mistaken. So that's one over here for Doubt. Where's the second one? Ah, the second one is over here, so unfortunately not so lucky with the TC positioning. But other than that, Let's take a look at the civilizations. So Spanish versus Mongols. Yeah, Mongols should get a big advantage here. This map, you get a lot of resources, natural resources here. So there are a couple of zebras, you get the elephants, um, the goats here, scouting as well. So many elephants, so Mongols here are probably gonna dominate the early game. Spanish, of course, they get their sp power spike in Castle Age with the Conquistadors. Mongols potentially have the edge in late Imperial Age with the fully upgraded Mango Dice, they are pretty much unstoppable. Um, Spanish though, they are also a monk sieve, so they can potentially go for monks. I don't think that's gonna be the case though, I think most likely we're gonna see Doubt going for super super fast Fuel Age, then into Scouts. And we might see the game ending in Castle Age. We do have some water here though. Let's see if they try to go for that. Yeah, alright, so Tato's gonna go straight into the water. This is a map that I, I'm personally not very familiar with, so I'm not really sure how they play this, but going for water seems to be like a good option. Tato going for, for the water is even more important so, because of Doubt being Mongols, he probably doesn't need the water food, as he is gonna get a lot of a lot of food just by the natural resources. How many days does it require to eat one elephant? Well, how many villages do you have? How large is your town? Where can I find the background music? Well, this is Age of Empires soundtrack, uh, both from Age of Empires 1, Definitive Edition, and from Age of Empires 2. So, just gotta look in YouTube, there are many playlists with this kind of music. Yeah, the aesthetics here are definitely like Kilimanjaro, like Serengeti with the big trees, the Baobab tree, Acacia tree, good stuff. The Struggler here is so, so large though. It also has more wood than, than a regular tree. That's the third elephant going down for Tato, but Doubt is gonna go up to Field Age, and he's gonna be there at 7 minutes and 28 seconds. He's already taking wood over here, he's gonna go for the barracks right away. So he's gonna go for the stables, and he's gonna have a couple of scouts over here, under 9 minutes. That's super super quick. Uh, do Mongols still have win condition in Castle Age or just Turtle to Imperial? Well, Mongols they are usually a lot stronger in Imperial and late Imperial they are very very hard to deal against. Or to deal with, I mean. While Spanish they probably get their, their power spike in Castle Age because Conquistadors or Gunpowder units in Castle Age like Conquistadors, Janissaries, they are very very powerful especially in castle age they are probably more useful there than they are in imperial age uh, but we, we we have to wait and see conquistadors they still can get converted and in imperial age arbalists they uh, they are a huge threat to gunpowder units however 
tapped out. Let's see. Is it gonna build a stable? There you go. It's going for the stable right away in Super 4. The castle win condition is get advantage in feudal. Not go in. If not go in. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah, Mongols they get a good advantage in early feudal as they are able to go up a lot faster. But then in late Imperial they also have a very very nice unit. That is super hard to fight. Very fun to use, but super frustrating to play against, I guess. And let's see, that going right away with the scout. Earlier though, he did lose the original uh, horse that he had over here to Tatos DC. So he doesn't really know where to go. He is going to be scouting right now, as we can see. He doesn't really have a lot of intel to work with. He's not gonna find anything here. And let's see, is Tato gonna go for Spearman? He doesn't seem to be going for Spearman. Tao's gonna scout this though. He might go for a dog just to deny the food. Oh, but he attacked now, so he told on himself. The scout. Two scouts now for Doubt over here. He should be able to take a good engagement. He might get a villager. He's gonna get one villager. And he's not gonna lose the scout. Let's see. Oh, this is some good micro from Doubt. He should be able to get a scout over there. Both players going heavily into scouts. Uh, that's also that's also good for Spanish. The Spanish they get good cavalry. And also going for bloodlines is also gonna affect conquistadors. Good quick wall over there for Tato, so he's gonna be able to completely wall himself. Which means that he can look forward into going into Castle Age right now. He still has a decent amount of animals here. Livestock. And his resources are looking alright. So in terms of gold, he is not taking gold, right? Alright, so he's gonna go and start taking gold right now. Uh, with three villagers, he's gonna take around two minutes, two minutes and a half to, to get enough to go up to Castle Age. So that's gonna have to find a different way to do damage here. Otherwise, he might fall behind in Castle Age. Mango Dive, fire faster now in Castle Age, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's either in Fuel Age or in Imperial Age for Mongols. It's gonna be hard for, for him to hold against Spanish in Castle Age. But we might get a surprise. We have seen already Doubt holding on and getting back into the game. A couple of times already. Even winning. So let's take a look over there. Tato going forward now with a couple of scouts. I highly doubt he's gonna be able to do, to do any damage with those two scouts. Uh, there are too many villagers over here. He might be able to get a villager if he went up here though, as the three villagers they are not going to be able to defend so well. Over here though, that's one exposed villager that might go down. So never mind, he is going to lose one. Very good snipe there. From Tato. He is going to lose, oh alright, he won't, anyway. Let's see. Yeah, unfortunately for Doubt, he's not gonna be able to do a whole lot now. He's gonna need to go up to Castle Age. Uh, Tato's 100% gonna look up to go up to Castle Age. He has the resources already, he can even use the market to rush it. Yeah, there you go. So he sold 100 food and he's going up to Castle Age. So at this point, he has over 500 stone. He is gonna have enough for a castle when he gets up. Where is he gonna place the castle though? He can potentially he can potentially place it over here if he wants to protect the gold. He can potentially place it outside as well if he wants to get access to a different gold. But if we take a look at the scouting information from Tato. Yeah, I think probably the best choice for him is to place the castle defensively around here. The issue though is the ground here. So the cracked ground that we can see here, the dry ground. It affects the the buildings. 
So stuff that gets built on top of this sort of terrain, it's easier to destroy. It doesn't have uh, as much resistance. But yeah, for the time being, Tato's gonna go up. Dao's getting close though. He is gonna go up himself in a bit. He is not taking stone, so he's not. He's probably not gonna try to go for for Mangolai and Castle H, which makes sense. Castle H, they are not so good. He's gonna go up now though, and Tato is gonna have a couple of minutes of advantage. The water though. Let's see. Dao's gonna try to clean this up. Uh, and the water eco is kind of important for Tato. Villager advantage right now, 7 villagers higher for Doubt. He's gonna hit Castle H in a couple of minutes, and there you go, so that's the defensive castle. He's gonna start pumping Conquistadors, and if we take a look at Doubt's economy, uh, well, there were a couple of idle villagers over there, but these guys, they are super exposed, so 4 Conquistadors could get a lot of villagers over here, they could get a lot of villagers over here and over here, uh, Doubt's eco is spread all over the map. And if he doesn't go for for something other than scouts, then he might not be able to survive Castle Age. We're gonna have to wait and see what he does. Over here though, Tato losing all the fishing ships. So that's also kind of a big deal. Kong's so deadly in this map, I agree. Is wall the control important at all? I don't think so. Um, if they went for walls and if they went for a wall like this, probably you could use a transport ship. Otherwise, I don't think so. Especially not if you're Mongols. You're probably better off trying to use the, the water, uh, the land resources, I mean. It's probably more important for Tato to try and catch up with food income. But it's very unfortunate that he lost everything here to the uh, fire galleys. So there you go, a couple of Conquistadors already out, and the scouts here are gonna get chewed out by the Conquistadors. Look at the damage! Two Conquistadors! They two shot scouts here. The Spearmen, they are not gonna... Yeah, they are not gonna do so well against the Conquistadors either, they get outrun. Yeah. Going for Camels is potentially good, but camels they don't get pierced armor, so they get the full blast. And three conquistadors are already proving quite difficult for Dao to handle. Or to manage, I mean. Tato doing a good job here, hitting and running. One thing that Dao could do, potentially he could use a, a transport ship, so we were talking about this a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, he could potentially go for a transport ship, a transport over a couple of knights or something. He could do some damage. Then this castle is quite good. Yeah, it's gonna provide good protection. While this is kind of annoying for Tato to have to deal with all the, the, the camels, those were a lot of resources that Tao could have used into something else, but he sees himself forced into trying to go for a defensive unit and it's, it's all right it's good you need to react to the conquistadors you need to react with something I, I would say probably monks is better but still uh, those are resources that he is not really yeah he's not really doing anything with yeah the camels they are just going down these two they don't have any HP Best of 13. 5 Conquistadors, they killed so much. Taking a look at the KV, we can see that the, uh, it's pretty much close to 4 to 3. And that's gonna go down, uh, gonna go even higher now for that. Uh, for Tato, I mean, sorry. Oh, and this is what we were waiting for the one shot. One villager down, two villagers down, three villagers down, that's gonna be five or six, four, five villagers! Oh my god, six villagers, seven villagers down, just like that, like nothing! It's gonna go win right now, the Conquistadors, 
they have 6 range, so they are not going to be able to outrange the TC, but he still might be able to snipe a couple of villagers here. The TC, the TC doesn't have enough garrison in space for all the villagers. He's going to go around now. There is no way out of here for these villagers. And all of a sudden, Doubt have more villagers. Now, Tato is at an advantage of 5. He's even killing the elephant. Look at the laming, the castle leech laming. Oh my god. Killing more villagers. He might even kill these villagers. Doubt's gonna start going for Mangodai. Very interesting choice. Uh, he's gonna need a good mass of Mangodai though. Range is even lower. 4 plus 1 at this point. If he goes for Bakinaro, then he's gonna have 6 range. So that's gonna be the same as, as the Conquistadors. But if we take a look at the stats, 75 HP for a Conquistador, 80 for a Mangodai, 7 damage for the Mangodai, guys, 16 damage for the Conquistador. Now, we need to realize that the Conquistadors, they get 50% accuracy, so they are only gonna land about half the shots at full range. But when they close the distance, they are a lot more accurate, so they should be able to out damage the Mangodai. However, the Mangodai, they do shoot faster, I believe. And also, the, the attack delay, I, I believe it's also lower for Mangodai. So, potentially, I think Doubt could take care of the Conquistadors here. But these are not all the Conquistadors that Tato has. He also has a good amount over here. So, Doubt's not going to be able to take the stone anymore. He is getting pushed here. He's going to lose the stable. And these units, they can go ham here. They can go and start raiding over here. This is exposed and yeah, that that's not going to be able to do a whole lot with these units. Tato is perfectly protected here. He is safe at home, fully walled. He has a defensive castle here and things are looking very good for the blue player. I think so. I, I think... This might be just enough pressure to end the game in Castle Age. I don't think we're gonna go out to Imperial, but we might get surprised. Um, yeah, I, you can't really know. With, with, without playing, you can't really know. So many games in the past, we were predicting the game to end in, in either Feudal or Castle Age, and then he goes out to Imperial, or he goes out to Castle Age, and he goes for a better unit, and he gets the game back. So let's say it's very important for Tato to keep the, the units moving here to try and go around. I'm not sure if going for the, the full army, uh, going around with the full army is good. He has a couple of additional units over here though, so he might be able to harass different uh, from a different angle, I mean. But yeah, he's gonna need to do something here. The house might go down. He doesn't really need to take it down though. He can just go around here. I'm not sure if he knows that. He's probably just trying to get Doubt housed. Anyway, Doubt now is gonna start breaking through here. Tato could potentially go for a house here or something to prevent the Mango uh, the Mango Dai from going in. Oh, but Doubt's gonna start killing units. That's one villager and one cookie so down. Look at this, this is this is exposed. And there you go, so you never know without playing this very well. He's gonna get four villagers like nothing. Tato tried to go for the town center here. Dao doesn't know about it. He's gonna go over there. Oh this is gonna go up just in time though. He's not gonna be able to do any damage over there. And yeah, this is now perfectly protected for for Tato for sure. Over here though, the Conquistadors finally arriving. Getting a couple of farms. Um, Tato's most likely microing over here. Very good play from Doubt getting the Conquistadors. But he's losing a good amount of Mangodai. He only has 8 right now, many of which are super weak. While Doubt, uh, Tato, I mean, has 16 Conquistadors. Full HP Conquistadors with one monk. So if he goes around here, he might get so many villagers. There's no way for him to know that though. Yeah, he didn't even scout this. He doesn't even know that there is a wood line over there. Ah! 
losing more and more villagers. Right now the villager count still higher for Tato. Still higher for him, four villagers more. Uh, but he is about to lose even more. There you go. Oh, the villagers, they are going down so fast. He's gonna try to micro now. Okay, they're not gonna micro. This might go in favor of the Conquistadors. They are very close, so the 50% accuracy is actually gonna increase for the blue units. And there you go, so that's the end of the aggression from that. He's gonna have a couple of Mangudai over here. But this amount of Conquistadors is more than enough to clean this up. Let's see, let's see, they're not gonna find... Oh, they're just gonna ignore each other. They were not paying attention. Tato's gonna realize though. Let's see, he knows about this. Doubt knows about this as well. Yeah, he knows. Oh, 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 oh. Is he gonna get a conversion? No. Nope. <laughs> that was a quick snipe. Let's see, let's see. That going for additional docks, that's very interesting. He is taking advantage of the water though. So even though he's 5 villagers behind, he has 10 fishing ships. That's a significant number, so he's gonna get a lot of food for that. We take a look at his eco, he has 200 food, 200 gold, he's using the resources now. Uh, Tato on the other hand has probably a stronger eco, probably... Yeah, he has more gold for sure, more food, more wood as well. He might be able to go up to Imperial Age. Well, let's see. Yeah, that castle is going to provide protection to the Mango deck. So, Tato needs to keep the units moving. All of this is completely exposed, and if he manages to kite the Mangodai away or to lure the Mangodai away from the castle, he can even take a favorable engagement. He has more units, he has stronger units, at least in uh, not at max distance. But he needs to keep the units moving, he's not raiding. Look at that, he's gonna give Doubt enough time to go for a defensive castle, and that's a bit sloppy here. He's gonna go for an now, but there is no point anymore. He might be able to find a couple of villagers here though. Uh, many of these guys are gonna be taking wood from here, from here, uh, probably from here. They are not gonna be in range of the castle, so he might lose a couple of villagers. But right now, the villager had vanished, the Tato had is vanished. And not only that, but now Doubt also has 12 fishing ships. In addition to the same amount of villagers, so we're gonna see this extend into Imperial Age potentially. Tato for sure clicking up. Doubt at this point doesn't really have the resources. He's gonna go for Wheel Barrow right now. Um, and I'm not sure about this decision. So he knows there's a castle, but he also knows that this is quite exposed. That castle could have been more forward to protect the gold. Over here, forward to protect the gold. Uh, I think he has another gold over here. Maybe, maybe, maybe over here, so that Tato cannot go around. But yeah, it, it looks like he's not gonna try to, to raid over there, he's not gonna try to go around. Both players are well protected at this point, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 TCs for the blue player Tato. And that at this point, 3 TCs only, but also with fishing ships production. Now the fishing ships, they are going to get less and less efficient as the game keeps going as they have to travel more distance to get the ship. Uh, <laughs> to get the ship, I mean. No, what? To get the fish. Wreck. Second language, guys. Yeah, that's a safe castle. He, he could have placed it over there, but it's also safe. The water ship. <laughs> Of course! You never heard of the, the water ship? That's what they call fish around here. The sea ship. Let's see, alright, Doubt's gonna go up to Imperial Age with, uh, just now. So Tato's gonna have the edge here in terms of going up. He's gonna have the, the time advantage. He's gonna be able to go for Elite Conquistadors. He can even potentially go for, for cavalry if he wanted to. I'm not sure if that's a good choice. 
So, alright, he's going right away for conscription, ring, archer, armor, and two man so. So right now two castles for both players, so the castle production is going to be the same for both. That does have more stones, so he might be able to afford another castle. Oh, but look at that. Tato's going for the third castle right away, so that's why he didn't have any stone whatsoever. And that's going to increase his production capacity of Conquistadors up 50%. And what is Dao going to do? Dao's going to have the massive Mangodai. He's going to need a good number. He's going to need to upgrade those to Elite Mangodai. He's going to need Thumb Ring. He's going to need Parshan Tactics, Bloodlines, all the Archer upgrades. So, yeah, it's going to take a while for those, for those guys to be fully upgraded. So the Conquistadors are 100% still dangerous here. And also having the edge in Imperial time means that this Tato can go for the Trebuchets and the Trebuchet. Oh, look at that! This is going down so fast. He has 32 Conquistadors here. <laughs> Unfortunately for him. He wasn't able to snipe 15 villagers when the TC went down, only one, but still quite good. That's gonna call the GG. Trebuchet deploying here, second trebuchet on the way. This castle was gonna go down. 15% larger uh, military production for Tato due to having one extra castle. That was gonna go up to 200% if Dao lost this castle, so... Yeah, that's a very unfortunate situation, the Mongol player. Unfortunately, had to choose where to go for... Um, oh, actually... That was the Imperial TC. I didn't realize. Yeah, well... That, that kind of explains everything. Okay, GG. Good game, good game. KD... Uh, 71 to 43 in favor of Tato. Very, very well played. Economy much larger, eco for everything other than wood. Technology faster uptime for Castle and Imperial Age. Imperial was fundamental, uh, and also going for the Imperial TC for that was also quite important. I'm not sure if he was expecting that TC to be the Imperial TC. Uh, he might have been expecting Dao to, to be going up himself. As these players, they usually notice the, the score drop when they click up, but yeah, that was still very well played. Still was over. Uh, so I think it's a genetic thing where only the land sheep are attractive. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on that. Yes, Ratten Pink, this is just a show match, best of 13 that they played earlier today, so we're gonna cast all of the games. Right now the score though, let me update that, so player 1, 3, player 2, which would be Tato is gonna get the second victory and that's gonna be the end of the 5th game, guys. We're gonna jump into the next game now. So the 6th game, and we're gonna be taking small breaks between uh, each 2 games, I mean. Let me update this. So they already used Spanish and Chinese. They already used Mayans and Mongols. There you go. So right now we have Japanese, Franks, Slavs and Malians available. So Tato might be going for... not sure. Yeah, not sure. We're gonna see. Anyway, load. Next game. Alright everyone, welcome back to another game of this series. There we go. So, Tato versus Doubt. Best of 13. Score so far, 2-3 to three in favor of Doubt. We're gonna be playing this time, we're gonna be watching rather. Rehydration. And this map, what it has is a lot, a lot, a lot of small ponds here in the edge of the map. And yeah, with turtles, box turtles with 200 food each. So yeah, they usually go for meals here and they start taking the fish. I feel like probably going for Indians in this map was going to be better as they get the fisherman uh, bonus. They work 15% faster and they carry plus 15 food as well when fishing. 
And yeah, right now we have... Oh, wait a moment. Hold on. Uh, this is not... What? Okay, so we don't have spectator overlay. Hold on, I'm gonna restart this. Alright, there we go. So yeah, take a look at the civilizations and the players. Tato's gonna be playing Japanese. Japanese are good. Uh, they do get bonus for fish and ships, but I don't think he's gonna go for fish and ships. I'm not sure if there is even space here for dock. Probably not. Yeah, there's no space for dock over there. And that's gonna be playing for Malay, I believe. Malians, Malians, my bad. All right. Pond ship. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the at the map. Main goal for the blue player, kind of forward. Main stone, forward for sure. He has a secondary goal here, kind of forward as well, and does he even have anything on the back? The secondary goal remaining that he has over here is not on the back, and it's also by the side of this wood line, so it's not super good. And yeah, I would say the goal situation is not greatest for, for Tato over there. As for that, he has a main back gold. Ah, that's great. Main gold on the back, main stone on the back. So a bit of a better map generation over there for that. Both secondary golds on the front though, and this secondary stone. Stone situation for Tato, forward stone over there. Does he even have a back stone or anything? No, both stones are forward, so... We might see some tower rushes from red player, I'm not sure, we're gonna have to wait and see. Let's see. Enjoying the stream? That's great to hear. I hope all of you guys are enjoying. This is for sure a great series. Was it Mega Random? No, no, they... they. Uh, I think they are playing a map pack. NEC, yeah, they are practicing for NEC. Which is gonna happen very soon as well. Yeah, there you go. So he's gonna go straight into the meal. Uh, Japanese, they get bonus for fishing ships. Yeah, but that's not the case for fishermen. Oh, oh. They're scouting with camels. So Tato already finding where Doubt is. Doubt, on the other hand, trying to find Tato, he's not going to be able to find him just yet. That's a very good meal location. Yeah, both players taking the, the pawn ship. Scouting for both players. Yeah, it's very hard to, to scout with the camels because of the reduced line of sight. Uh, so far, Doubt still hasn't found Tato. Tato knows kind of well. Yeah, he, he, he has a good idea of what Doubt's base looks like. Doubt's gonna start sending more villagers over to food. He's gonna convert one gold, which means that Tato is expecting a villager to walk over here. So he's gonna realize one once he finds out that the gold got converted. He's gonna know that the mills from Doubt are here and not here, let's say. So at least now, by deduction, he can know where to strike, potentially. Villager count, the same for both players. Resources are looking a bit better for Tato at this point. Oh, 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 he's gonna lose the camel. Rip. Still has one though. Yeah, that's a very tanky elephant. Good micro over there, trying to bring the elephant down uh, under the sea. Very, very good play over there. So, Tat is gonna go for the barracks right now. He is gonna try to go for men at arms. Japanese, uh, there's a Japanese bonus for infantry units. They attack 33% faster from Imperial Lich, uh, from Field Lich onwards, I mean, not Imperial. So the Menatars are super powerful for Japanese. And now that he knows where Doubt is taking fish from, 
He might be able to do good damage here. I'm I'm gonna try and see if he... Yeah, there you go. He's gonna try to rush Fuel Age. He's gonna try to go there with less villagers than you, you would usually go with. And Doubt, on the other hand, still doesn't have enough. He's... Yeah, he's gonna have enough now. So he's going for... Oh, he's going for extra villagers! I was expecting him to go for Loom and then go up. That's not the case, so actually... Oh, look at that! The camel got trapped out! Not paying attention, not paying enough attention over here. He's gonna lose the camel. And he didn't even scout the barracks. He might be expecting the Minotaurs though. It's very usual, uh, very usual for a Japanese player to go for Minotaurs. So Tato has definitely the advantage here. Uh, he knows where Doubt is. He has very good units to attack with. He's not using them though. He's not going forward. He might be waiting for the fourth one to go to get out. All right, there you go. So he's gonna go forward. He's probably gonna head uh, straight over here. Doubt's gonna go for walls though. Very smart. What's the name of the map? Well, the map is Rehydration. Like this, Rehydration. A special map that you will find in the NAC map pack. They're probably practicing for NEC2. So, let's see. Is he gonna be able to wall this on time? Oh, 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 Doubt's gonna spot it. But Tato already has him in at arms. This is not a good fight for... Oh, but Doubt is just trying to debate the Minotaurs. Yeah, it's gonna bring now additional villagers. Oh, 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 <laughs> look at the camel! Denying the, denying the wall! Oh! Break this! Oh, man. So close! Very good play over there for Tato. Unfortunately, not playing out the way he probably wanted. Now, Doubt's gonna have 5 Minotaurs instead of 4, so I, I believe still Tato should have the advantage here with some proper micro, he should be able to clean uh, all 5 Minotaurs up. Let's see. Now he can take the heal as well, so he's gonna have a small advantage over there. Oh, look at that, that's some great micro, he's losing... Oh, look at that! Doubt's gonna lose all the minute arms! Very close though, very close. So, Tato with the... Only the last man standing in here, trying to use the heal advantage to deal additional damage to this Palisade that's gonna have to get repaired, or he's gonna need to go for a house behind here to reinforce the walling. But yeah, the Malian player is gonna go straight into into archers. Malians they, they they do get with archers. They get camels as well. Camel still alive? Is this Tatu's camel? Yeah, it is. So he's scouting the archer ranges now. This is probably the most lucky camel ever. Could have gotten trapped in here. Could have gotten killed by the villagers. But that just didn't have the the kind of reaction that Tato had over here. That was a great play. And there you go, so the red player is gonna send archers forward right away. Uh, so he's gonna be able to get rid of this man at arm. It's probably not so important. If he didn't get scouted over here, then he could try to sneak the archers and try to catch Tato unexpectedly, but because, of, because the camel already scouted this, then there is no point trying to be sneaky. So he's gonna get rid of the man at, man at arm, he's gonna go forward right now. And let's see, so he's going for more archers, which means that Tato might be going for skirmishers. He's going for archers himself. So Japanese, they get good archers as well. Get up to Arbalest, get all the upgrades. So it's a great unit. Uh, great a great unit for that civilization in particular. Tato's gonna go up to Castle Age though. Doing some sort of wizardry. That's still uh, probably one minute away from clicking up. If he had a market, he could probably go up right now, but he doesn't. He doesn't. 
So Castle H is gonna be here under 18 minutes for Tata. That's not a bad time at all. He's still taking the turtles. Over here. Yes, taking turtles. Ah, there you go. Is this bug? No. There you go. So what is he gonna do? In Castle H, both players can go for... Um, they can go for, for crossbows. Additionally, Japanese get decent cavalry. They can go for knights. But going for knights in this situation is not good, as Malians, they get camels. So, we're probably gonna see crossbows versus crossbows and a couple of mangonels. I, I'm expecting mangonels for sure. Army numbers 9 to 7. Doubt only 7 arches right now. Doubt getting up to Castle H faster. He's gonna go right into crossbow, Balkin arrow, Balso. And well, crossbows, they should be able to break through here easily. Uh, he can try to go around as well, he can try to break this. If, it's, if he stands here with his army, he's gonna be able to break the palisade a lot faster as he gets a 25% uh, advantage with the elevation over there. Oh, let's see, so Doubt, I think he has Town Watch. That's still not gonna be enough to spot this. I'm not sure about this though, this kind of gives Tato time, or this kind of gives Dao time to react, and yeah, he's gonna go for the town center over there. Oh, Dao's gonna go for chain bard in armor! So the stable's up, going for knights now. Interesting play, so going for two additional TCs, going for uh, archers and knights, that's a good combination. Tato, I'm not sure why he's not going in though. He's gonna try to go in now. And there we go, going for the university, which means that he's gonna go for ballistics eventually, going for padded archer armor. He's still gonna be missing uh, leather archer armor, so only plus one for those archers. Uh, he already has Bucking Arrow, so plus two attack, only plus one defense. There you go, he's gonna need to go for the plus two. Going for ballistics though, that's probably going to be more important, as with small numbers, you want to hit your shots rather than having a shot that is more powerful but misses. So let's see, military, count 17 for Tato, 13 for Doubt, and Doubt had a couple of knights over here, so 6 knights and a couple of archers, apparently he's not going to try to go for crossbows. If he hasn't gone for... Okay, there you go. He's gonna go for crossbows now. And the knights, they're gonna be super good. So he can go around. He can pitch this army from, the, uh, from Tato, I mean. So he's gonna go around, but he's gonna need to wait for the archers to actually go around. Otherwise, he's gonna waste all the, all the knights. Let's see. Okay, this is good. This is good. He needs to deny the choke point. He needs to deny the choke point for Tato, and he's doing that, so Tato's not gonna be able to go over here. He might be able to go over here, though. There you go. He's gonna try to go... He's not gonna try to go over there, he's just gonna lose everything. That's kind of unexpected. I, I believe probably trying to choke the army here, uh, trying to cram the, 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 the whole army over here would have been a bit better. Against the knights, at least, but now the military count is higher for doubt so seven knights versus what archers crossbows eight crossbows and what is that gonna do that's gonna need to complement the the knights with something else he's not going for any more knights he's not going for archers he's going for an extra tc so it seems like he's gonna try to just boom here uh, he's gonna try to be annoying to tato so that he can boom back at home so that's the fourth to see that's going up. Gonna keep taking this. As for Tato, he has one. One to see only. This is gonna be like some previous games. I don't want to spoil which one. But this might go south for Tato quite quickly if he doesn't do anything. 
Doubts macro, man. Oh, Doubt going for Whip Barrow right now. And Tato going for Imperial Age. Okay, this is an interesting move. Instead of trying to be aggressive, it's gonna try to rush Imperial Age and go for Arbalest. Arbalest, they are quite good. Uh, they can deal with Knights, no problem. They can deal with other um, crossbows, no problem. They can even deal against Magnus. They, yeah, they're very good. If you're still stuck in Castle Age, Arbalest is probably the last unit you want to see. Uh, probably after Paladin. Or probably after Elite Mangudai. Or probably after 40 Arambai. <laughs> but you get my point. Arbalists are quite good. So Tato getting Thumb Ring right now. Still massing units. Added the third range. And yeah, he's gonna need to make like perfect use of all the units. Otherwise, he's just gonna get outrun, overrun by by doubt at some point. As the eco advantage keeps getting larger and larger in favor of doubt. Tato can only pray, and fortunately for him, he has a monk here. He can only pray for a good fight with the Arbalest. So he's gonna need to wait right now. Unfortunately, this palace gate is gonna go down. He is gonna push the knights back here with the monk. There you go. I think probably getting the palace gate down is gonna be more important than losing one knight. So probably not. Probably it's good to not retreat. Let's see. Oh, he's still gonna go back. Well, he can use the magnus now to take this down. So there you go, Tato going for bracer, going for arbalest. At this point he has 21 crossbows, soon to become Arbalest. He is not producing anymore, he is not producing more units. I believe this is open? No, it's not. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Doubt's also getting close to clicking up himself. He's gonna go around now. He is gonna find a couple of villagers over here. The last thing that Tato needs at this point is to keep losing units. He doesn't really have a lot of uh, villagers to work with. So that's good for him. Getting both Mangonels with minimal losses here. Not even a single Arbel is gonna go down, only slight HP loss. This is still open though. Over here. Uh, let's see if Tato, uh, I mean, let's see if Doubt manages to snipe a villager. That doesn't seem to be the case. And the Arbalists here are gonna start chewing the knights over here. And there you go, so how many Arbalists did he lose? One? He actually didn't lose a single ma uh, a single Arbalist over there. So now it's time to go offensive. I'm gonna start mining the gold over there. The resources are right on the edge for Tato, so he's gonna need to keep making more Arbalists and start doing as much damage as he can because the moment that hits Imperial Age he's gonna be able to go for for Cavalier I believe yes he's gonna be able to go for Cavalier he's gonna be able to go for Onagers and Onagers they are not so easy to, uh, to deal with if you only have Arbalest <laughs> the micro you see, every time that somebody uses the caster the caster command, I feel like somebody's screaming at me because Nightbot says Nova with all caps. Which is correct because I'm Nova with all caps, but it's like I read and the first thing I see is NOVA! You know? Sorry about the ear abuse. Sounds like Winchester, I sound like Winchester. Glow Ken, hello man, how are you? Let's see, so, for Siege Workshop. Oh, thank you, oh. thank you, thank you, you wonderful man! No! <laughs> oh, sounds smarter, thank you, and thanks for the subscriptions, guys. Thanks for the support. Bubbly Official is here to live on and to bring good entertainment, good matches, and thanks so much for the support and everything. 
So, Dr. Slow, thank you so much once again. Very much appreciated, man. Uh, support to Wooly Official means support for show matches and more content in the future for all of us, really, to enjoy together. Getting back into the game, though. Can Wooly Official really solve all my problems? Well, I don't want to comment. I, I, I don't think I, I am qualified to comment on rumors. <laughs> Still though, good offensive here from Tato, going with the Rams, going with the Arbalest, with the Monk even. The Monk super important here as he wants to get all the HP he can from the army that he has. Does he have any additional disease? He already had the second one. Let's see if he had another one. No, only two. Doubt though, he had four. So how many does he have? One, uh, one, two, three, four. Four disease for doubt still. The villager advantage is quite something. Uh, 60 more villagers. Yeah, uh, 50 more villagers at this point. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Schizophrenics Arbalest. Hey, Denmark. Hey there, Mark, welcome. And yeah, the subscription sound is quite good, I agree. <laughs> so yeah, Doubt's gonna go for conscription, gonna go for fletching, already going for cavalier, he's gonna need uh, larger numbers though. And let's see over here, oh, really with the cavaliers! Doubt's doing some good damage here, and Tato has such a fragile eco already. He might lose even more units over there. He cannot afford to keep losing villagers. Uh, that's one conversion for Tato, that's great. This is idle eco for Tato. If he's not losing villagers, he's losing uh, working time, which is not good. So he's probably gonna need to wall this or, or defend this a bit more. But for the time being, this is a huge threat for Tao. Now, he added some elite skirmishers, elite skirmishers are probably the right answer to Arbalest. They do get outranged though, so with, with some good micro, which is what Tato is displaying right here, he still might be able to clear all of this up. But Doubt's eco is so strong. Getting wood from here, getting gold from here, map control with the castle, 40 Cs, look at this amount of stables even. He doesn't even have the eco to produce from all six tables, but he has the infrastructure and that's very important. Many times we find ourselves with a lot of resources but not the infrastructure, not the production capacity. That's not gonna happen to doubt. Uh, he has a good amount of uh, ranges, ranges here. Uh, he has good amount of stables here. He is getting pushed here. But this is the entirety of Tato's army, while Doubt is raiding here with Cavaliers, he already managed to decrease the amount of villagers that Tato has, which was not high to, to begin with, so it's not a great situation for him. And he's not really doing so much with the, with the Arbalest. He might, he might even get cleared up here. Let's see. Doubt could potentially delete the Palisades and try to surround this. This is probably a bit of a miss micro here, losing a lot of Cavaliers for free. Uh, getting one Cavalier converted as well. Yeah, that's a bit of a, bit of a misplay from Doubt over there. Still though, the eco advantage is over twice. Over 100%. Actually, over twice the amount of villagers. Let's see, this is GG long ago, why you don't say so? Well, I don't know, I, I don't feel like it's GG, I think like he can still bring the game back. Uh, we have seen a similar situation, uh, just it's been the, the opposite, it's been the opposite case, it's been doubt the one to be behind by so much. But I don't think he is gonna bring this back though, because he is not doing the damage that he needs to. Doubt is misplaying a bit here, he did waste a lot of units over there, he has a larger eco but he cannot keep wasting units like that. So misplays like that and good plays like Tato's can still bring the game back for the blue player. But he's not doing, he's not being proactive enough, he's not doing enough damage. Um, he needed to keep the Arbalest moving all 
day long and he's trying to do that right now but it might be a bit too late Doubt going forward with the offensive castle yeah yeah this kind of things you know all right this might be the gg this has to be the gg that is not gonna get any more stone now because of this castle this castle is unstoppable because of the skirmishers and it's even on the hill so this gotta be gg i believe we are gonna see yeah we, we have to see the gg after this uh now he is kind of getting surrounded here losing a good amount of arbalest and not really being able to do any damage because of the skirmishers. Yeah, this gotta be the GG. Let's see. That also has map control and five relics. Uh, he doesn't have the relics. He picked one relic, but he dropped it now. There you go, it's right there. Let's try to pick another one. But well, this is a good play from Tato. He's taking villager over there, taking villagers over here, pushing over there. All of this is exposed. If we drag this, the, the selection box, that's 15 villagers that Dao could lose just like that. That should bring the difference in eco down by quite a bit. Yeah, but this is the issue. Tato is so careful with his army. He's trying so hard not to lose any Arbalest that he doesn't feel like he has the freedom to go around and raid. He feels like he is getting constantly pushed back by skirmishers, so he has to micro, go back, go back, go back, and he cannot go forward or go around and snipe villagers. In any case, Doubt might be wasting units, but it's probably not wasteful if he is actually keeping his eco alive. So yeah, at this point I'm not really sure what Tato's plan is. He doesn't have stables, he has a single barracks, he has 5 ranges, he's producing only from 2. He's piling a lot of resources but he cannot go up ages anymore so I'm not really sure what the point in saving resources is anymore. He's losing the Arbalest over here. Best of 13, that is like a whole day. I don't I don't know. No, there is no prize money. And uh, this is only for honor. They played this earlier today. We're gonna cast all the games. And uh, this is already the sixth game if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. Tato finally losing the four units that he had over there. Doubt getting a castle up here, denying the gold, denying the wood. Raiding with cavalier. Raiding with skirmishers. This is over, guys. Twice the villagers. Yeah, I think it's quite... Um, yeah, it's pretty much certain that the game's over. Even going for Light Cavalier. Farimba! Farimba's gonna be super powerful. There you go, and this is very weird GG, very anticlimactic because there's nothing happening, he just calls the GG. It's like he waited until all the all the army from Doubt died before calling the GG. And that's a very, very weird moment to call it. But yeah, GG indeed. We're gonna update the scores right now. So let's see, player 2, this would be Tato, so player 1, Doubt. I believe this is correct. Yes, doubt for Tato 2. Best of 13 means that there is a maximum of uh, 7 victories. Which means that we still have, at the very least, 2 more games to go. Or, wait a moment, that's 4. We have, at the very least, 3 more games to go. So let's load the next one. Uh, but before that, we're going to take a look at the achievements. And after this, we're going to take a small break. 3 minutes break, so feel free to stand up, stretch a bit, walk around, uh, drink some water. The hydration bot has been around telling everyone to drink water. So take care of yourselves. And we're gonna be here in just a couple of minutes to keep going for more games. Very good KV, Tato getting 2, pretty much 2 to 1. Uh, not enough though, getting overrun by Eco. 
And yeah, going up faster, uh, having higher tech was not enough, fortunately, and that's gonna be a good game for Doubt. Be right back, everyone. All right, everyone, we're gonna load the next game now. Uh, so this is gonna be, let me see. Oh, what? Hold on. What? Getting some issues here. Hold on, hold on. Uh, so this is gonna be the seventh game, if I'm not mistaken. So the only sieves that they have left to play are slabs, and Franks, I believe. Let me see if I loaded the next game correct. Wait a moment. What? Uh, Alright, so hold on, hold on. I'm gonna take a moment. Yeah, this is kind of weird. Oh, 